Hello, everybody. My name is Heidi Greco. I'm the Dean of Academics here at Fayetteville High School. Um, as Dean of Academics, part of my job is the, the director of the CCP program at Fayetteville High School. So I work with all of the local colleges and any of the students that participate in CCP. And I make sure that they get everything that they need um, for the CCP program. Hold on just a second. Okay, so like I said, I help partner with all of the schools, the colleges, and this year we had over 50 students participate in the CCP program. For those of you that don't know, um, CCP stands for College Credit Plus, which is a program that has been set up by the state of Ohio that helps students. Um, it was designed to allow students to attend college courses beginning in their seventh grade year. And the high schools pay for those, those um, college courses. This year, we've partnered with Chatfield College, Southern State Community College, University of Toledo, University of Cincinnati's Claremont College, and also God's Bible College. So this year, we've been having lots of partnerships. Um, the CC program, CCP program offers an excellent opportunity for our students to experience college courses while still earning their high school diploma. To be part of this program, there are a few things that student, students need to do first. And first of all, you're required to attend this meeting. So all students are required by the state of Ohio to attend at least one of the CCP informational meetings before they enroll in the program. Then students will um, complete an intent to participate form. I sent this out to students earlier today. It looks like this. It's front and back. Um, these forms have been emailed to all of the students and they are also available in the high school and middle school office. Those forms need to be signed and returned by um, April 1st. So this is simply an intent form. So by signing this form, it doesn't guarantee that you're gonna participate in CCP, only that you're considering CCP for the next school year. After those two requirements are met, students will need to apply for the college of their choice. The application process is a little bit different for each college, but most of the colleges have an online application for CCP students in particular. Be sure when you apply for your college that you apply under the CCP application. Um, that's something that comes back to the schools and they understand that you're part of the CCP program and basically the billing and everything will go through the school as long as you do it that way. Um, what else? After you apply to the college, students would then receive an application um, acceptance or denial letter from the college. Um, in that letter, there'll be several things that you need to fill out and return to the school, the college. Um, at this point, I am kind of taken out of the equation in the realm of CCP. The thing about CCP is that when you apply for colleges, they assume that you are a college student, you are a college student when you get accepted. So they're um, placing the responsibility back onto the student. This is a little bit different than high school. So when a student applies to take a class at a high school level, I can you know, advise them, I can give them suggestions, I could talk to teachers. When they apply for college, I really don't have a lot of input on that. I don't know when the students turn in their applications. I don't know who was accepted, who wasn't. Um, I don't do any of the scheduling for AccuPlacer testing or um, 
the student schedules for the following school year. So that's basically taken from the high school level and put back onto the, the college level. So at that point, once you are accepted into a college program, you are a college student and my hands are kind of tied. Um, that's a little bit different than what most parents are used to. In college, there's a, a law it's called FERPA. FERPA laws prevent colleges from communicating with parents um, without the express written permission from the student. Um, so as a parent, you have to realize that if your child is a college student, a CCP student, and they're doing poorly in a college course, you cannot just call the professor or the college and advocate for your child like you could if they were doing poorly in one of our classes. There are not parent-teacher conferences in the college setting, and I don't even have um, access to most of the information when it comes to college, so I don't get like reports from the college saying, the student is doing poorly in my history class or um, things like that. So there are some drawbacks to this program, um, but on the other hand, it really allows students to help them grow and see that transition between high school and college. Um, I hope that you guys can hear me and you can see me. I'm not 100% sure that this is working right. <clears throat> like I said, I'm sorry about my voice. I've been dealing with sickness for the last couple of weeks. So um, what else? So the purpose of this meeting tonight is to kind of give you an overview of the CCP program at Fayetteville High School and at the colleges that we, we partner with. One of the biggest partners that we have is Southern State Community College. We have a campus in Hillsboro and there's one in um, Brown County, which is in Mount Orb. And they do a lot of stuff online. So a lot of our students this year um, decided to go to Southern State. Like I said before, one of our partner schools was Chatfield College. Chatfield College closed down this year in the middle of the year. So there is no more Chatfield College. So if you're a student and you were thinking about going to Chatfield next semester because you live near there or um, whatever, Chatfield College is no longer a college. Um, students had to transfer from that school to, um, to Southern State or other, other colleges at that point. So our partner school, our big biggest partner school is Southern State. So today you guys are gonna be watching a little video from Southern State that gives um, lots of information about the CCP program. In order to participate in CCP, you have to see this video, this video from us. Um, let's see what else. Before I get you started on the video, <clears throat> I will say that this, um, this meeting is going to be about 40 minutes long because this is on Zoom. We can only do a 40 minute long meeting and the only way that I could record is to do through Zoom. So, um, Keep in mind that this might be a shorter meeting than you anticipated. One thing that I wanted to mention is that we do offer CCP classes on our campus through Southern State Community College. The students are taking CCP college classes, but instead of leaving our campus, they stay in our classrooms with our teachers and earn um, college credits on our campus. Um, two of our teachers, Mrs. Schaefer and Mrs. Gilpin, um, teach these classes and they're certified um, college instructors. Mrs. Schaefer teaches college history courses. Next semester or next year, she will be teaching two different American history courses. This year, she's teaching two different Western civilization classes. Each of those are worth three credit hours. And Mrs. Gilpin teaches two different English composition courses, each also worth two credit hours or three credit hours. This is a great option for our students who cannot drive or the students that wanna stay on campus or even students who want to earn some college classes, but might be a little intimidated by going to an actual college setting. The students in those classes are our students and um, the other students in the class will be our students. The teacher is a Fayetteville teacher as well as a professor and it might be a good way to ease into that college coursework. So if you're a seventh or an eighth grader or even a ninth grader or 10th grader, 
coming into the program for the first time, you might really, really want to consider taking our um, on campus Southern State classes before you jump into um, classes off of our campus. The expectations are high in those classes. The work is college coursework, so it is very rigorous. They use the same syllabus as a traditional college campus class. However, the classes are west, way less intimidating, plus the teachers are familiar with the way that schools work, um, high schools work. Um, so before we go any further, I'm gonna let you watch a presentation. It's about 16 minutes long. It's from Southern State Community College regarding um, the CCP program there. And it will give you a better understanding about the process and what CCP is all about. Um, when it's complete, like I said, it's about 16 minutes long. I can come back and answer any questions that you guys have, and I'll be going more in depth into CCP here at Fayetteville in particular. Please feel free to send me any messages in the chat bar, or if you have any questions or you need clarification or you need anything that's discussed during this presentation, please do not hesitate to reach out to me. I'm going to get that started. I'm going to share my screen. And it's one that needs to be very careful. Hi, everybody. Thank you for spending your time listening to this virtual presentation about Ohio's College Credit Plus program. Slide details will be explained by the advising team of Southern State Community College. The team is directed by Dr. Peggy Chalker and consists of academic career advisors Brenda Landis and Paula Campagna, located at the Hillsborough campus, and academic career advisors Michelle Callender and Stephanie Mead, located at the Mount Orb campus. So what is College Credit Plus? This is an opportunity for students, and it's one that needs to be very carefully considered and carefully planned out because College Credit Plus, or CCP, allows for students to earn high school and college credit at the same time. It's a dual credit program. Students will enroll in college courses and adhere to the policies and requirements of the college. Students in grades 7 through 12 need to live in the state of Ohio, attend an Ohio secondary school, either public or private, or be homeschooled. Students in grades 7 through 12 can apply to any Ohio public college or participating Ohio private college. You can, you can apply to more than one college and you can also attend more than one college at the same time through the CCP program. There's a few steps that you have to take to be able to participate. The first step is eligibility. A student needs to be eligible for College Credit Plus participation based on assessment exam scores. What exactly does eligibility mean and how is it determined? The laws have changed recently within the past few years about, about the eligibility piece. A student needs to have a remediation free score on one of the standard assessment exams or have a cumulative unweighted high school GPA of 3.0 or higher or has a cumulative unweighted high school GPA in a range of 2.75 to 2.99, along with having received an A or a B grade in a relevant high school course. And a relevant high school course is usually a math and or English that's considered. If a student wants to participate without that available cumulative unweighted high school GPA, an A or B grade in the relevant high school course can be considered. The GPA is calculated beyond the hundredths decimal point. And so the grade point gets rounded to the next hundredths decimal point to determine a student's eligibility. Student scores must show that they're ready for college level courses in at least one subtext on an exam. The exams could include ACT, SAT, 
Accuplacer, Alex, PlaceU, or MapleSoft. After a student applies to the college of choice, the college or the university will notify the student about what the requirements are for their exams. The second step is college admission. A student needs to apply to the college that they want to attend and they need to pay attention and understand what the admission requirements are of that college. Another step that's been added to the admissions process is the requirement to complete a permission slip. <coughs> that will be provided to the student with the college's application for admissions. As mentioned previously, just make sure that you understand what the college admissions requirements are um, regarding paperwork processes and deadlines. And understand that the college has the final decision on the student's admission. Uh, another new step that's been added is once a student has been accepted into the CCP program, they also have to fill out a questionnaire that will be required and needs to be on file before the student is allowed to start registering for classes. And that takes us to step three, course registration. A student is considered eligible and has been admitted to the college then they are able to discuss the various course options that they're allowed to take based on prerequisites, requirements, assessment scores, and other requirements of the courses. We mentioned the dual requirements earlier about how the, the courses can satisfy high school graduation requirements and also college requirements. It's important for the student to communicate with their school counselor. They're an integral part of helping students understand what their graduation requirements are and CCP course substitutions. And some of our high schools have more requirements for graduation than the, than the minimum state requirements. Course eligibility rules. Students must complete their first 15 credits in level one courses. These courses include transferable courses, they can be courses in IT, computer science, anatomy and physiology, and foreign language. To, they can also be courses that are part of a technical certificate, such as accounting. They can also be courses that are part of a 15 or 30 credit pathway. That could be a medical assisting pathway. Courses in study skills, academic, and career success. What are other requirements? Grades. CCP grades earned in the college course is the same grade that will be on the high school transcript. CCP course grades will be factored into the high school as well as the college GPAs. Students should also consider courses in a career pathway that interests them. A student might be interested in a business pathway, so it would be great for them to consider the courses in that pathway. Students should ask about pathways that identify courses leading to a major or degree requirements. What are the graduation requirements? Students may take college credit plus courses in subject areas that will satisfy the high school graduation requirements. Students must work with school counselors to ensure they are meeting any mandatory testing or other high school graduation requirements. How many classes can students take? Students may be enrolled in up to 30 credits per year, which includes high school courses. This is the calculation. 30 minus secondary school units times three, which is a maximum of the CCP credits allowed for the state to pay for. The maximum number of credits allowable for a student while participating in the program is 120. If a student enrolls in more than 30 credits for the year, the school will discuss with the student whether to drop the course prior to the no fault withdrawal date or the student may pay for the entire course 
including tuition, fees, books at the college's standard rates. This is option A. What are differences between high school and college? Knowledge acquisition. In high school, information provided mostly in class. Out of class research is minimal. In college, coursework will generally require more independent thinkering, longer writing assignments, and out of class research. Study time. In high school, required homework ranges between one to three hours per day, whereas in college, the standard rule of two to three hours of homework for every hour spent in class is around three to five hours per day. Tests. In high school, tests are sometimes given weekly or at the end of the chapter. In college, it's a little different. Tests are generally fewer in number. They cover more material and assumes a student has four years of high school content. High school, there are numerous quizzes, tests, and homework assignments. And then in college, there are fewer tests. And if there is any homework at all, it will be used to determine final grades. What are other differences between high school and college? Role of the parent, high school. Parents are strong advocates working closely with teachers and counselors. College, parents serves as a mentor or support for the student. The college views the student as an independent decision maker. The Family Education Rights and Privacy Act that we call FERPA protects student education records. Accommodations, high school. Parents and students work with high school staff to determine what assistance or accommodations can be made for students with learning challenges. College students must work directly with, with college staff to determine if accommodations are needed. Current high school plans may or may not be included in the discussions. What are the expenses for college and credit plus? At public colleges or universities, there will be no cost to the student and or families for tuition, required fees and books. Some optional expenses are the responsibility of the student and family such as parking and transportation. At private colleges or universities, there will be no cost to the student and our family for tuition, required fees, and books, but students may be charged a small cost per credit hour. You'll have to check with that private college or institution for more information. Students must complete the intent to participate form and provide to the public school by April the 1st, 2023. Students must confirm at the college and the secondary school if the student will take advantage of College Credit Plus using state funds, which is option B, or if the student will self-pay, which is option A. Students can choose option A. The family and or student will self-pay for college courses at the standard rate of tuition, fees, and textbooks. Under option A, Students can choose to earn college credit and high school credit or just college credit. Students can choose option B. All college course tuition fees and textbooks will be paid by the state of Ohio. Under option B, students will earn college credit and high school credit. Option B. Students should also visit um, transfercredit.ohio.gov for transfer information. So what does college ready mean? Being college ready is more than just being academically ready. 
Students need to consider emotional maturity for, for the college environment, college expectations, and self-discipline. Consider time management and organizational skills. And consider the obligation to an honor code to submitting your own work. Grades earned in a CCP course are for high school and college credits and will be calculated into the student's GPA at both places. College credit plus credits will be utilized in the calculation of final <coughs> grade after high school. So what are the deadlines? April 1st, 2023, students must complete and return the intent to participate form to the school office. Check ACT and SAT testing sites. Test early to meet college university admission deadlines if required. Summer semester deadline will be early as classes usually start in May. Check with the college for all semester deadlines. Limited choices after August 1st for fall semester. So how do you get started? You want to complete that intent to participate form and provide it to the school office before the deadline. Apply for admission at the college of your choice before that for the deadline. Contact the college and discuss assessment testing. And meet with your high school guidance counselor to discuss scheduling and graduation requirements. Um, let me know if you have any other questions. And you can also visit the CCP website for additional resources. That's at ohioed.org. And now we're going to take a moment to hear from a student at Southern State. Okay, so I hope that you guys got a lot of information out of that video. Um, like I said, because we had to do this where I had to record it, this video can only be 40 minutes and we're at 33 minutes right now. So um, there's a couple more things that I want to touch on before um, this video ends. One thing in particular is that if you're enrolled in Southern or in the CCP program, Fayetteville Schools does provide for up to 30 credit hours per year, they pay for that, including your high school classes. So each high school class is um, three credit hours. So if you take some classes here and some at Southern State, then you need to make sure that you take that into consideration. Fayetteville also pays for any textbooks or materials that are involved in that class. So it is the student's responsibility, however, to make sure that they communicate with me to figure out which textbooks are needed for that semester. Um, students might also have to go to Southern State or to the bookstore of their college to pick up their materials. I order some of the stuff on Amazon. Some of it we have to order through the bookstores and they will use a voucher system to do that if they pick up books from the colleges. Um, the most important thing to remember is that textbooks are very, very expensive. So when we purchase the books for you for your college class it's also part of your school fees so if you do not return that book then it goes on right onto your school fees so it is part of our library system all textbooks that are um, given to students for ccp purposes are checked out to the student so if those books are not returned first of all you'll have to pay for the book or you return it before we can um, provide you the next semester's books. So keep that in mind. Also, each college credit hour is around $170 per credit hour, which means a normal three credit hour class will equate to about $500 if you end up having to pay for that class because you failed it or you dropped it after the drop deadline. So make sure that if you are a student who is failing a class, you need to make sure that you are aware that you will be paying for that class if it's a CCP class and it's going to be around $500. Um, also, each class has about um, a two to three week drop deadline. And if you drop after that, then you're charged for the class, even if you don't get a grade for it. If you drop that class and the school has already been charged, then they will charge you that full amount. So be aware of that. <coughs> Um, another thing that's important to a lot of our students, remember that students can still participate in any extracurricular activities at Fayetteville if you participate in CCP program. So if you want to play sports or if you want to be an FFA or um, FCCLA or drama, 
you can still do those things if you're in CCP classes. However, um, it's kind of on the, the student to make sure that their schedules um, align with that of that sport or club. So when you develop your schedule with your academic advisor at the beginning of the semester, and you know you're playing basketball, varsity boys basketball, in the winter, you don't wanna sign up for a Friday night class because you'll miss every single class because you're, or you'll miss the basketball game. So make sure that you keep that in mind. Um, two more things. One semester of college credit is the equivalent of one year of high school credit. So in order to graduate from high school, you have to have four English credits. What that means is you could take English one here for your freshman year, English two here your second year, and then your junior year, if you took English 101 and English 102, two different semesters, then you would be finished with your English requirement. So kind of keep that in mind. Um, the last thing I want to mention, you still can graduate with the honors diploma if you, um, if you participate in CCP. Also, um, for the next two years, the students that participate in CCP will have the opportunity to um, be the CCP valedictorian or salute or CCP valedictorian of that class, um, starting with the class of 2026. So this year's freshman, um, those requirements have changed. So at the class of 2026, no longer has that um, CCP valedictorian, but the next two years, um, so the class of 24 and the class of 25, there will be a CCP valedictorian from your class. So um, you can see me if you need any of those, or if you have any questions regarding valedictorian, salutatorian, CCP valedictorian, um, or honors diplomas. I have about a minute. If you guys have any questions, please feel free to contact me. Um, my office is in the high school office. I'm here every day. Um, you can also email me at Heidi.Greco at FPLS.US, or you can call my direct line, which is 513-875-2407, and I can answer any of your other questions that you have. Like I said, I'm very sorry about my voice, and I hope that you guys um, got a lot of information um, from this PowerPoint presentation or this Zoom meeting. Um, if there's any other questions, please let me know. Make sure that you fill out those intent to participate forms and get those turned into the high school office um, before April 1st. If you have any other questions, let me know. It was really great talking to you. If you have any questions, let me know. Have a great night.